sponsored by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria. A warm welcome to this special dialogue on financing Nigeria's financial agricultural revolution. I'm Wale Famura. We're reaching you from Lagos, Nigeria, where we're joining a distinguished panel to discuss key success stories from Nigeria's agriculture sector. Perhaps the biggest success story we've seen since the beginning of this transformation agenda has been driven by Mr. President, of course, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture, is that right now we've had 2.2 million people newly employed as a result of, directly as a result of this transformation, and another 1.2 jobs have been preserved. So clearly, a key success story there. But of course, we'll be hearing a lot more from captains of industry in Nigeria, in the agri space, giving us their views on how successful it has been, and of course, the challenges that they have faced. I'd like to now move on to introduce the panel. Um, joining us for this discussion, starting from the far right, of course, is Mr. Kola Marshall. He's the managing director of the Real Partners, and he'll be giving us a very interesting perspective of impact investors in Nigeria. It's great to have you on the panel, Kola. We also have Mr. Emmanuel Ijewere. He's the chairman of Best Food Farms, and who, of course, will be giving us the perspective of a farmer in Nigeria. Then we'll be speaking as well to Mr. Jite Okoloko. He's the group CEO and general managing director of Notori Chemicals. They are, of course, one of the lead providers of fertilizers in Nigeria. Jite, it's great to have you on the panel. And then to my immediate left, we do have Mr. Atedo Peterside. He is the chairman of Presco. He is the, he's the director at Presco PLC. I've just, I stand to be corrected here. But he, of course, will be giving us the views of another um, agricultural company operating in Nigeria. We also have uh, Mr. Gwenga Oyebode, he's the chairman of Okomo Oil Palm Company. He, of course, will be giving us a perspective there as well. Thank you so much, Gwenga, for joining us. And last but not the least, on the panel is Alaji Ta Isa Tafida. He is the chairman of Famag Jal Farms. And, of course, he'll be giving us more perspective there. Joining me to co-moderate this panel is the Director General of Nigeria's Securities and Exchange Commission. And I'll actually hand that over to you. Mr. Romaute, it's great to have you as well on this panel. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm delighted to be co-moderating this panel with you because uh, the uh, people, the panelists that you've just introduced are really champions uh, of agribusiness uh, in Nigeria. Um, let us start with Mr. Atedo Peterside, who I believe is one of the promoters and also currently a director of Presco. Uh, I know Presco has done very well this year. It's one of the companies that's listed. Uh, many years ago, it voluntarily listed uh, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It is a success story. Let's hear from you, Mr. Pittside. Yes, thank you. I think let me just explain my involvement with Presco because it's a real life story. Presco was, was owned 100% like by Seat by Seat of Belgium. And Seat, the major shareholder there is Mr. Van der Beek from Belgium. He's the chairman of Presco, Presco in Nigeria today. My involvement was that I was a bank CEO and, and Presco were thinking about a listing. And the form of the listing was a very simple one that Seat owned 100%. And they wanted to, to sell down to 60% and basically sell 40% to the Nigerian public. Uh, the way I did my business as a bank CEO, I was never going to get involved in something like that without getting up to go and visit the place. So I, I got up from Lagos with Yohan Desaidiku, who I think is here today. We went to go and see the operation to know what exactly they, they're, they're talking about. And the first thing that struck me, which I had the documents in front of me, was that Presco is the first fully integrated oil palm establishment in West Africa that is complete with plantations, oil palm mill, refinery, and also a plant to, for um, fra fractionation. So in the middle of Edo and Delta, we were seeing a modern operation, fully integrated. And so I began to understand exactly what this guy was talking about. The interesting thing about Presco is that it also shows you the difficulties in Nigeria. They don't have just one single plantation. Because, you know, it's difficult to go to a, a, a well-inhabited place and get endless land in one location. So what they had done cleverly was they had basically had three estates which were not far apart. The main, main one was Obareti, 
and the other, the second one, Ologbo, those two are in, in a do state. But very close to them also, they had one, a, a third estate in Kawan Estate, which is actually in Delta State. So the press place located where Delta meets Edo State. So they have one estate in, in Delta and, and two in Edo. Now, interestingly, that company, today they have over 3,500 employees. I still remember the figures off head because the, the IPO was at something like five naira per share. And that was in the year 2002. From then till now, they've done a bonus issue of one for one. So they basically doubled the number of shares. So basically, the shares that were bought for five naira, today's price is about 15 naira. If you're just, you just for the one for one, which is double, then you're talking about basically 30 naira. The interesting thing is that, and this is what is, is pleasing about agriculture, this was not rocket science. You could see it happening year after year. Increase in sales every year, bottom line going up every year, and that formula is in place and looks like it can go on forever. In terms of yields and efficiency, the yield per hectare of Fresco is as high as any plantation anywhere in the world. So clearly they are feeding off the opportunity that Nigeria offers. Yeah. Did you, uh, that, the I, uh, well, I'm fascinated because it's also talked about risk management. They have plantations in several states, uh, but one of the things I really enjoyed hearing about is that in 10 years, uh, they've basically, uh, you've had uh, a 600% return, uh, essentially, or appreciation uh, in price from five naira if you adjust for bonus shares to 30 naira. Well done. So it has performed very well on the, on the yes. stock market, obviously. Maybe Absolutely. We should hear from, should we hear from Alajif? And I mean, you have a very interesting discussion because you're not, you're not selling crop, right? You're selling beef. Tell us about your experience. But, but, but I do want to say something, Elijah, before you start. I, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture actually told me, and maybe you can confirm, that last year, during the Nigerian Economic Summit, which was about a year ago, you listened to him and you thought, I'm doing this in Egypt. I should probably also do it in Nigeria. Tell us also what you've been able to achieve in this last one year. First of all, our, our system started long before the coming of uh, what is happening today. But the inspiration of consolidating our activity started when we realized that agriculture has gotten a definite leadership. Uh, in that direction, we started two activities at the same time. The first activity we started was to organize our two farms comprising of 30,000 hectares into where we allocate to local farmers to produce rice, maize, guinea corn, and groundnuts. We provided them with implements. Our target is for them to produce their crops, but the byproduct of those crops will be milled for feeding our cattle. Our aim is to move meat forward. While we are doing this, we had an intention of continuously selling our cattle to the traditional market of moving them from north to the south and inter north market. Then I saw a bank in an Al Jazeera program on abattoirs in Nigeria. Tell us a bit about that. What Why did that are they slandered Nigeria showing that we are the worst of the people in the world? where meat is being processed. And they exhibited it, showing an abattoir of Potakot, abattoir of Inugu, Kano, Abuja, Maiduguri. They proved their point. And you saw that opportunity? Yes. Everybody who watches Al Jazeera at that time might have seen it. And what, then, what has that, then, what, what investments have you made as a result, and what then, has been the return? As a result of that, I decided to set up an abattoir. 
and I went into uh, First Bank and invited First Bank to come and see what we do with our traditional farmers. And First Bank agreed with me. So the First Bank came into our farm and was giving each farmer 500,000 Naira. We guaranteed each farmer using our own marital relationship. We don't allow somebody who is a bachelor to take loan. We make sure whoever is taking loan has, a, has an in-law. So he in has, to have, has to have a family. <laughs> so that's part of the insurance, to make sure yes. the money comes back. So <laughs> your in-law will stand for you. Sorry, Alahaji, can yes. Spensters participate? Your in-law will stand for you. You will stand for your in-law. We got over 250 farmers who subscribe to that system. And for two to two and a half years, the success was wonderful. Then our cattle increased from about 3,000 to about 50,000 in that farm. So, fantastic story there. It's very interesting to see what is happening. In that direction, the agricultural commercial agriculture financing came in. I had a farm in Abuja where I used to grow fish and uh, I have land where I grow grass for export to Chad Republic and produce grass seeds. So I decided to, to import balers, harvesters for grass, mowers for grass, and wrecks, and two tractors of 250 horsepower that can run the annual production of grass. It can cultivate, it can harvest, it can build. Okay, fantastic story there. And then we went different... in to borrow uh, 300 million from First Bank. Okay. And um, add our 700 million for our own money to set up an abattoir. Right. We'll come back to you at some point. We really want to hear from others. But I, I, for now. there is a theme that I'm hearing also, uh, or two themes. One's that that connection between the banking sector and the capital markets, because Mr. Peter Seid said Absolutely. he was approached as a bank CEO and he went to do his due diligence. And then this company ended up voluntarily listing uh, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Alahaji has talked about um, the first bank, the interaction with first bank. But the second thing that I think is interesting is also integration. He talked about the farm being providing grains for cattle. Uh, so that's something I think we should look at um, if we have some time. Absolutely. Mr. Ijeweri, uh, you're also not just uh, a promoter of some initiatives, but you're also the chairman of the organized private sector in agriculture. So I'm sure you have a few thoughts to share with us on success stories in agriculture. Thank you very much. Um, I start, for, start off from the one you raised, the one about um, the private sector. Um, in fact, we set up the organization with a very, very active support of the revolutionary minister. And on the 20th of last month, we did the impossible. We brought them all under one roof and it's called CASIN, Community of Agricultural Stakeholders of Nigeria. And I want to seize this opportunity to thank him for the support that we have received. Uh, it's a private sector driven thing. What we have always had had been organizations like Farmers Association, Cassava Association, and so on. But the entire value chain is revolution, with each one is dependent on the other, and that's what brought that up. So we have that, but in fact, a number of our members are here today, and let me just now take it from the back, as part of the so-called success stories. Um, through that kind of organization and reaction, I met um, Alaji Tafida. Also, we are, although we are professional colleagues, we did not see the previous wars when we were chartered accountants. Now yeah. we are farmers. Right. Now, I have in Lagos here an abattoir, a smaller one than the giant he is building in Abuja. And he's been there for the past nine years, and it was... Um, it was uh, directed at a particular market. Okay. What we now discovered as a consequence of the relationship we now have and the drive that the minister is pushing, 
the program we had in expanding our own abattoir here in the Abidjo village, just between here and Ekbe, uh, we have put that aside. And what we have entered into a memorandum of understanding that he will now do all the slaughtering of all our, our beef and send them to us in Lagos right. through the cold chain. So we're already seeing collaboration. That's right. So that's the cooperation coming from this right. whole idea. And but going beyond that, I went into this idea of agriculture many years ago. I'm talking about 10 years ago. And it was this, what he mentioned about the kind of publicity that was given. Uh, nine years ago, the USAID and the American Embassy took a few of us to Chicago to tell the reason why they took us there was because they were about to make a statement that Americans should not buy or eat beef in Nigeria and should avoid places like the uh, fast foods we have, tantalizers, Mr. Biggs, because they are very appalled by the conditions under which we slaughter cattle. But they felt that it would not do Nigeria any good. We okay. who were involved in it, let them go and show us something better. Right. And we came back more inv invigorated to get that done. All right. So since then, we've obviously seen some it's beginning, it has not. It's not been accepted because for okay. you to start with, you should not sell any beef that's less than 24 hours after the slaughter. Right. It's illegal in Europe. You go to, you go to jail for it. Right. But here, you want the meat, the, the, the blood dripping. Well, we need to change that concept. But, okay. But that was about seven or eight years ago. And my, I had to bring my son back from the U.S. So he has taken it over at Abidjo village. And today, he has gone into meat, into further meat processing. He has a, he has a pregree, poultry, and cattle fattening. But he's gone into sausages and all that. All so right. he kicked me out. And... Um, so I'm just his chairman. Okay. So somebody was asking me whether I see the checkbooks. I said, I don't see the checkbook. Okay. The guy is very jealous of his territory. Clearly, this, these my, developments are my, within the family yes, to a large My extent. second son. But I'll come back to you. But I really want to hear from um, GTA because I think you are, you are playing a very key role in the value chain. Your company provides fertilizers. Can you just, because and, and I think the more interesting thing about your story is that you've grown the company to the extent that we're hearing now that perhaps next year, your company will be listed on the NSC. Talk to us about that. Can I just add um, something? I think you should start from the fact that it's privatized assets. I mean, these were assets that were being run by government. And tell us what is the difference uh, today. Well, I guess ours is a pretty uh, unique story in the sense that uh, uh, we acquired, Notori acquired the uh, abandoned assets of the old NAFCON. Assets that have been abandoned for over 10 years we're left to the elements of the weather. We're not mothballed like you would normally protect assets anywhere else in the world. We actually had zero employees, nobody at all. So it took us a number of years to build an organization around these old assets. We raised $222 million from seven commercial banks in Nigeria to carry out the rehabilitation. We had to build an organization from scratch, people, systems, structure, processes up to the point that today we've now completed an extensive rehabilitation of the plant. We employ over a thousand people and, that's what, and then if you even go beyond that, subcontractors around the area providing support to Notori means Notori is creating in just in the Port Harcourt area over 2,300 jobs today. Beyond that, now today we have a plant that's operating at over 100 percent of its design capacity. This is a plant nobody ever thought would ever work today. We've now actually built very structured supply channels into the market. We've created over 80 major distributors nationwide. Below that, we have about 2,500 agro dealers. We also have about 2,000 village promoters who are the first private sector extension services workers helping to train farmers in best practices utilization of fertilizers, improved seed, and teaching them, of course, how to actually apply fertilizers in the right place, in right ways. We've now designed fertilizers in such a manner that we have different packs, 50 kilogram packs, one kilogram packs for farmers who've never seen fertilizers before. We're actually tailor-making fertilizers for specific crop types, 
And today we've now launched a new subsidiary called Notorious Seed, and we've now harvested our first seed that will go into the market in 2012. All right, fantastic story and interesting stories we're hearing from the panelists. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll hear more from impact investors in Nigeria's agricultural space. You're watching a very special broadcast on Nigeria's agricultural transformation and, of course, how money is trickling through into that sector. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.